Welcome to our review on radiation and the human body. The first thing we're going to look at is something called background radiation. Now background radiation is made up of sources of radiation that we're exposed to all the time in our daily lives. I've given you a pie chart at the bottom there that gives you a breakdown of where this background radiation comes from. So 50% of the radiation that you're exposed to in your everyday life will come from radon gas, which is produced by rocks. The next highest would be our artificial sources at 14.3%. Then we come down to medical uses at 14% and ground and buildings at 14%, food and drink 11.5%, cosmic rays at 10%, and then we fall into the very tiny numbers for our nuclear power and nuclear weapons tests, which are 0.1 and 0.2% respectively. So make sure you are aware of where these sources actually are so that if you're asked to list a couple of sources of background radiation, you can do so. There are a couple of key terms we need to know the definitions for, contamination and irradiation. Now these are two terms that people often mix up and use inappropriately. So make sure we learn these definitions so that we don't do that. Contamination occurs when radioactive material is taken inside the body or onto the skin. So internal contamination can't be removed. Whereas irradiation occurs when radioactive material is outside your body. The radiation can then travel into your body. So contamination is inside, irradiation is outside. Obviously, either contamination or irradiation isn't particularly good to be exposed to. Because when we're exposed to ionizing radiation in either way, then it can damage the DNA inside your cells and that can lead to cancer. So what we find is if you're only exposed to a very small dose of radiation, yes, there will be damage that occurs, but your body can usually repair that. Even though when we first think about the term radioactive material, then a lot of us think that's really bad. In fact, it's got some very good uses for us. First one of these is in medical tracers. So what we do with these is we'll have a radioactive isotope, which we're going to inject, inhale or swallow, depending on which part of the body we wish to look at. We can then use a gamma camera to detect the radiation to show where the problem is. So for example, if you'd had a radioactive isotope injected, we can use the gamma camera to identify if you've got a blockage or a leak in one of your arteries or veins, for example. Now, the radiographers that are choosing the isotope have to do so very carefully to make sure that the half-life is just right. If the half-life is too short, then it's going to have already broken down before we've got it all sorted and the gamma camera on, so that's no good to us. And if the half-life is too long, then it's going to be emitting that radiation for a long time, which is more likely to cause problems for the person who's taken it into their body. So we tend to use an isotope called technetium-99 because it's absorbed by a wide range of organs and it's got a half-life of around six hours. So it's long enough for us to be able to carry out the actual investigation work, but not too long so as to cause a high chance of problems. The second use we've got for radiation in the body is in the form of a gamma knife. Now a gamma knife is a movable source of gamma radiation that we're going to move around the body. Now the reason that we're doing this is because we can use this to treat cancer because gamma radiation will kill the cancer cells and it shouldn't harm the healthy cells when we do it in this fashion. So by moving the source of the gamma radiation around the body, it stays focused on the tumor. So that means the tumor gets a high enough dose to kill those cells but it's not giving high doses to the healthy cells because as it moves, it's only giving lower doses of the gamma radiation to the healthy cells. So those ones shouldn't be killed. Obviously, if you've got a tumor in your head, the last thing you want to do is just literally fire gamma radiation through one section and kill everything it comes into contact with. That wouldn't end well for anyone. So we want to kill the tumor cells without killing the healthy cells and the gamma knife allows us to do that. 
Hopefully at the end of this video you can describe the difference between contamination and irradiation. You can compare the hazards associated with radiation. You can explain how half-life affects the hazard of the radioactive material. You can describe how radioactive materials are used as tracers and in cancer treatment. And you can recall a few sources of background radiation.